and hello and good morning. This is Bowles.tv, B-O-L-E-S dot TV. I'm David Bowles, your very humble host. Coming to you live from the East Coast of the United States of America. Weekdays at 9 a.m., Monday through Friday. We are here to have a chat and have a conversation with you live or via video on demand if you're non-integrated. Well, it's a beautiful day here on the East Coast. Shockingly good. I have all the windows open. Our balloons are blowing in the breeze. And I fear that I may have had my beautiful wife, Jana Marie, wear the wrong coat today. Because it's already hot out there, 50 degrees, winds out of the south-southeast at 4 miles per hour, which is very lovely. Anything over 9 miles per hour and it starts to get uncomfortable. But 4 is terrific. So she has her heaviest coat. She's out there. It doesn't look like it's going to keep raining, which makes me worry that she's going to be very sweaty all day. And that's not fun when you're the beautiful Jana Marie. But we'll hold thumbs that she's okay, and that she will be okay, and that we will all be okay. So she is now out in the world. As we know, she has been sort of dramatically, not her dramatically, my Well, I think we're back now. This happened last week, where we would start the stream, and about 15 minutes into it, we would go to the blue screen of death, is what I call it, on the Twitch end. And on my end, locally here, everything looks great. Our frames per second are good. Upload's good, not dropping anything. CPU is at 1%. I don't understand what's happening. Why? Why? I just freeze. I froze. Mm in the middle of telling you a story. So now we're back. I don't know if we're back back, but usually when that happens and we stop the stream 
and then restart the stream, <clears throat> it's okay. But that doesn't mean it's going to change, not going to change today, and become unokay, I think is the technical term. And now it looks like our music just pooped out on us, too. I don't know what's going on. Everything's melting. But that's the fun of a live stream, right? All the mistakes we make. All the terrible things that happen. It's all part of the process, as they say. As who says? I don't know. <laughs> so I have a very good friend in Lincoln, Nebraska. And he's a writer. Does very well. And yesterday he posted on Instagram, Hey, I got my second booster. Now, we're friends, but I don't know how old he is. He doesn't really know how old I am. But now I know that he's over 50 or immunocompromised, but I don't think he is. Because he got his second booster. And that was approved two days ago. We got ours the first day. Within half an hour of being announced by the FDA, <coughs> we were at Walgreens getting our shot, Dwayne Reed. So I congratulated him and he congratulated me and we just feel great because in the Midwest, especially Midwestern Iowa and Nebraska, where Jana Marie and I hail from, people tend not to want to get the shot in the hinterlands and they don't want to wear a mask. In the big cities, Omaha, Council Bluffs, Lincoln, Bellevue, meh. Grand Island, Kearney, meh. They'll get a shot, maybe. Maybe wear a mask. But the rest of it's like, don't trample on me. Don't tread on me. I'm a snake and i fighting against liberty. Exactly, against liberty. True freedom is being able to go out and do what you want to do because you've been vaccinated and you're safe. Not that you're sitting at home, yelling at the television screen. So I hope that we are still working and live and not frozen, because that is a bizarre feeling when you're in the middle of talking and then right here, freezes. And then you go offline. Very strange. I have no idea why. I don't know what's happening. But we will soldier on and continue on. Because that is the passion in which we live our lives. Hey, if you're on Discord, we now have a live chat channel that is now active while we are live streaming. It's kind of cool. So you can go there, join our Discord server, and say, hey, and we'll hear you on the live stream. I'll give you the link to the Discord server, and you can find the chat room. It is Bowls.tv live stream. That's what we're doing. So here we go with the metaverse. What will it take to stop fraud in the metaverse? It's a very interesting story and an interesting question. And here are the questions that are being asked and that we should all endeavor to try to answer. How can we be sure the avatar with whom we are sharing intellectual property is really a genuine colleague? How can we trust that a virtual interaction with our bank manager, friend, or romantic partner isn't an interaction with a fraudster? And how can we protect our own digital identities from being stolen and used by people with nefarious intentions? In January of this year, Meta boldly claimed to be building the world's most powerful AI supercomputer, Research Supercluster RSC, set to launch mid this year. And these are the issues 
that are clinging to that hope. Preventing fraudsters from registering under false identities. Now that's a good one. I don't know if it's possible. I've always felt that people should not be on the internet and not be completely identifiable. I am all for registering people on a blog with some kind of verification so we know who they are. Why empower a bad person, a cruel person, a terrible person, with anonymity to go in there and wreak havoc in the world? It's something I don't understand and something I don't purport to support. While the metaverse promises to change the game for digital interactions, those building these new environments need not reinvent the wheel when it comes to security. Brilliant strategies for verifying people during account registration already exist. Okay, right. Well, this metaverse should provide users an option to link offline identities with their metaverse ones by tapping into modern identity verification technologies, including those used by banks. Hallelujah. All the way. I support. This will then ensure that people have an opportunity to confirm to the meta world that they are who they say they are. And how do you argue with that? Unless you're trying to do something hurtful. Why wouldn't you want people to know, hey, this is the real me, and I'm in the metaverse. Identification will ensure that people have an opportunity to confirm in the meta world that they are who they claim to be. Facial biometrics is a strong solution to this problem because the technology can both verify a person at sign up and improve ongoing authentication. Simultaneously, liveness detection is key too. Once a person's selfie is matched to a photo, on their ID or enrolled biometric. Liveliness verifies whether the person is actually there and not just someone with a photo, screenshot, or mask pretending to be someone else. Here's another idea. Protect a new breed of valuable assets based in the metaverse. Okay. When Facebook's Metaverse first launched, investors rushed to pour billions and billions of dollars into buying acres of land, virtual land, not real land. The so-called virtual real estate sparked a land boom, which saw $501 million in sales in 2021. This year, that figure is expected to grow to over a billion dollars buying land, buying space that is only virtual, that is not even unreal. Selling land in the metaverse works like this. Pieces of code are partitioned to create individual plots with certain metaverse platforms. These are then made available to purchase as NFTs on the blockchain. While we might have laughed when one buyer paid hundreds of thousands of dollars, $400,000, to be Snoop Dogg's neighbor. Well, in the metaverse, this is no laughing matter when it comes to security. Money spent in the metaverse is real and fraudsters are out to steal it. One of the dangers of the metaverse is that while the virtual land and property aren't real, their monetary value in our world is very real. On purchase, they become real assets linked to your account. Therefore, fraud doesn't look like it used to. Previously, if your Facebook account was compromised, the hacker might fish your friends to click on a link, leading them to a spoofed digital shop or offer. That's really too good to be true. However, in the metaverse, fraudsters could use your stolen digital identity to gain access to your valuable items in the real world or in the metaverse. 
And that's why users should be able to choose their security methods. With access to varying levels of security based on where it applies, for example. It's one thing playing a game in the metaverse and another to sell $10 million worth of property. It's also important to consider the user experience. Stamping out fraud before it even begins starts with protecting the only link between your assets and their monetary value, your digital identity. We also need to continually check that genuine accounts haven't been co-opted by criminals. And this brings us to our beloved topic of NFTs, non-fungible tokens. And we need pins and passwords. And virtual wallets need to be locked up. Preferably tied to hard wallets that are impossible, more impossible, more difficult to crack than a software wallet. Organizations building the metaverse have to take security seriously. It's a huge opportunity for organizations to limit metaverse fraud before it even begins. In today's world, storing biometrics in a secure, decentralized way is the way forward and possible on the blockchain to provide further assurances of safety. So it's coming for us, this metaverse, and we just have to make sure that we're very prepared to not only protect ourselves, but protect those around us and the people we love from the terrible things that can happen intentionally and unintentionally, by not taking care of ourselves and by allowing the bad elements to rise and strike back against us. Speaking of NFTs, oh boy, this excited me yesterday. And this popped up a couple of days ago, but I only saw it yesterday in my email when it came to light that DC Comics is going to sell 200,000 Batman Cowl <gasps> NFT digital collectibles that's going to be worth $60 million. And I admit it. I want one. I think it's cool. And they're not all going to be the same. They're going to be subtle differences, which I don't like unless it's... I like to pick my NFTs. I don't like these random mints where you go on there and they say, well, we have 5,000 NFTs and they're all $300, whatever. And some of them are one of ones, which means they could be worth $10,000. And some of them are one of 500 which means it's probably going to end up being w worth less than $300. So if you want to mint and mint early and get the set price of $300, you're taking a risk that you're just going to lose money a little bit, stay the same, or maybe hit a home run with $10,000. But that's gambling with your money. And if you are a collector, and if you enjoy collecting NFTs, you want to know what you're buying. You don't want to wait till the secondary market when everyone's minted theirs and now trying to turn a quick profit. You just want to go on there, say, here's my whitelist, access. I want that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. And I'm going home. But no, you randomly, you, you get what you don't choose. It's like a casino game, right? All chance. And that's what I don't like. I'm not a gambler. I mean, I'm a big gambler in my life. That's why I say in my real life, my serious life as an artist and an author and a book publisher where every single day is a gamble against death. I don't need to gamble for fun. I have enough of that in my real life. So in that way, I'm very conservative. But this, this kind of interesting. Holy cash grab Batman from Variety. DC next month will release the Bat Cowl Collection, 
a total of 200,000 unique NFTs, which are 3D rendered images that draw on the Caped Crusader's 83 year history. The non fungible tokens, NFTs, will be priced at 300 smackers apiece. Meaning DC and Warner Brothers are looking at landing $60 million from the drop. And they will get the money. People will buy it. The Back Howl collection will go on sale April 26. And owners of DC Fandom NFTs will receive exclusive pre-sale access through the digital collectibles. The new NFTs will be released through DC's NFT marketplace, nft.dcuniverse.com. You can purchase upgrades, you can register. And the NFT drop comes on the heels of the theatrical lease of The Batman, which has reeled in more than $330 million domestically. The Batcow Collection NFT release is being managed by Warner Brothers. To instill fear in their hearts, you will become a bat. A monster in the night, heed the call. I'll play this, but we can't have any. No audio, we get in trouble with audio. 200,000 unique cowls. Okay, I'll go with that. Oh, looks like they have color in the cowl. It's interesting. Your key to the DC universe awaits. I don't know if I like the color. Batman's cowl is black. Well... Well, 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 Davy, as Uncle Mills used to say. Well, well, well. I don't think I like it. I don't like the color. Now, see, can you imagine? You spend your $300 and you get a pink Batman cowl. No. But that's probably the one of one that's worth $10,000. Well, that's weird. Hmm. But I wonder how they could make it different if they're all black. I guess they have to use color. So it's going to sell out immediately and then go back on the market. It's going to be wild. What's exciting about this amazing collaboration is that we are continuing the evolution of Batman's distinctive bat cow by bringing it into the modern digital world, making it accessible and more wildly engaging than ever before with pink and silver spikes. Through the introduction of carefully curated colors, textures, and upgrades, the end result offers a take and a taste for every kind of Batman fan out there, and serve as powerful ways for all of us to make a timeless icon. And finally, those who purchase NFTs from the collection. Ah! Thank you for following Paradox. I hope you are well. I hope you join in our chat. We're happy to have you. Those who purchase NFTs from the new collection will get access to a private DC Universe fan forum featuring behind the scenes content, select fan events, physical collectibles. Hello! Nice to see you. We're just sitting here chatting about NFTs and the Facebook metaverse and other things to come. We hope you are doing well, and we're happy to have you here. So they're sort of trying to ape the board, apes Yacht Club, I guess, by having a community, and which is smart because Batman is an established brand. DC has developed a two-year roadmap which will expand utility for bat cowl NFT owners every 52 days in areas such as augmented reality, metaverse integration, and expanded wallet capabilities, which I'm not exactly sure what that means. Wallet as in your NFT wallet? Are they going to have a special wallet you have to use for DC Universe? I hope not. That's going to be a big mess. People like their collections in one place tied to one address. But I guess we'll see. It'll be an interesting sort of conundrum to solve. And with that, we're going to take a very first blood pressure break. We will return in a moment.
And we are sort of back. I'm sorry. I've been sitting here trying to find something and find something and I can't find it. But I'll tell you what it is anyway. So we were talking about NFTs and the bat cowl. And yesterday we talked about someone who stole a bored ape, a $350,000 bored ape, and it was sold for $115 and no one knows what happens. And now the more you think about it, the more it really does seem like it might be some sort of little scheme to help the person on their tax break that they suddenly lost $349,000 through a theft. And it's not a theft. The person is just reselling it to themselves. But maybe not. I don't know. But talking about artists and established artists who always have to try to change and make a difference in the world, some of them are very intrigued by these NFTs because there's big money to be made. And as one NFT artist said, who releases a lot of stuff, and there's a problem because some NFT artists release new stuff every week. And if they're good and they have followers, people want to buy their stuff. But if they're good and they have a lot of followers, their stuff, even at a whitelist price, is often $800, $1,000. So what fan can afford, really, everyday fan? to buy a new piece of art every week for $1,000. That's a lot of money. People can't, they, so they have to make choices. They have to make decisions. And then there are other artists who maybe once every six months release something. And their fans know that, and they save money to try to you know buy that one thing every six months. So there's one artist, I believe his name is Xcode, very popular. And what he does is creates 8,000, this was a sale that happened last week, 8,000 moving images that he makes as an NFT. It's like a vibrating head, looks like electricity going through the brain. And he does, he does several things very cleverly. He doesn't release a lot. Instead of putting up one NFT and saying this is there are 8,000 of them, he puts up the exact same image 8,000 individual times. So that technically... Even though there are 8,000 identical images, they are all one of ones. And for collectors, that's very important. Collectors do not want to be one of 25. They want to buy an NFT. It's my NFT and nobody else can have it. I can use it as my avatar. I can use it in advertising. I can do whatever I want to do with it. But if I'm one of 8,000, then all the uniqueness and importance is gone. So this Xcode artist released 8,000 identical copies of this vibrating face head helmet thing. The introductory price, the whitelist price for all of his followers and fans who had previously purchased other pieces of work of his was one Ethereum. And let's say at that time the price of that one Ethereum was $3,000, which is sort of the average price. And all of those vibrating heads, all 8,000 of them, sold out in 45 minutes. At one Ethereum. So if you do the math, 8,000 times 3,000 is $24 million in 45 minutes. Now you do that a couple of times a year and you have $50 million for what I think is ridiculous price and uh, but I think the board apes are ridiculous I think the face helmet things are absolutely ridiculous but other people don't other people don't mind being one of 8,000 which is what they are even though you're individually buying them 
24 million dollars in 45 minutes so this other artist was using that artist as an example saying hey people criticize me for having too many things out and too many things for sale well look at this guy 3,000 times 8,000 24 million and they're mad at me and the point is no no one's mad at you they're just they want to try to keep up with you but they can't keep up with you if you're releasing new things every week for a thousand dollars people would prefer that you release one beautiful thing every six months and they pay three thousand dollars that's what they want that should be the lesson you're taking away from it not that you should be releasing more because people want more people don't really want more oh now my light is flashing this is I'm going to go after and unplug that. I'm not leaving. I'll leave the mic on. I'm just going to put up my Be Right Back screen so I don't look ridiculous unplugging it. Uh, I don't know why it does that. It did it last week. I have a couple of them. I have a couple of these uh, Elgato mini key light things. <sighs> and uh, because that one was flashing like that, I swapped them. The other one's over here, shining on this. Now we have a black hole back there. It looks ugly. So I maybe it's too far away. It's not close enough to Wi-Fi. I don't know why it flashes like that. It's very bizarre. I don't know why it's happening or how it's happening. So that is the lesson you learn. You think you know what you're doing, and then you go out there and you try to change the world and make $24 million in 45. So some people say that's just ridiculous. Other people say, hey, that's who I want to be. I want to be an NFT artist. I want to go out there and make $24 million in 45 minutes. And who can blame them for that? And why some artists can sell out of 8,000 identical vibrating heads in 45 minutes? And other much more interesting and talented artists suffer online in obscurity, trying to get people to buy their stuff. Who knows? Who can account for the bad taste of people? It was a P.T. Barmer who said, no one ever went broke underestimating the stupidness of the American population. He also said, there's a sucker born every minute. Would you pay $3,000 for an NFT? One of 8,000 of a vibrating head? I guess if you're into it, you would. Well, speaking of artists and NFTs, Jeff Koons is a very interesting artist. And he plans to release an NFT project that will land on the moon. <laughs> now, who owns the moon? Now, I think China and... <laughs> the USA are arguing over that right now. Because theoretically, I guess, right now the universe and outer space belongs to all of the world. But not for long, because once we're able to regularly go up there simply and easily and have weapons to defend ourselves, then we're going to start dividing up the universe, dividing up the territory. It's going to be like the land. That's how it's going to start. If someone's tree is coming over on your property and this is your property line, you can cut that tree in half because your property extends all the way to the sky. Well, that's what China's going to say. Everything that's the whole outline of China goes straight up to the universe, straight into space. All of that space is owned by China. And then they'll expand into other countries' space. It's going to be ridiculous. But if you're listening to me right now, we won't be long, living long enough to be there. Every hundred years, new people. And that's going to take a hundred years to get there. That's nothing that's going to happen that quickly. There'll be lots of sharing and kumbaya over the next 25 to 50 years. And then after that, it's going to be in the space race into the universe with guns and weapons and bombs that can kill instantaneously. And lasers. Today it was announced that Koons will be launching an NFT project in a way that truly embodies the crypto spirit. His work is literally going to the moon. Koon 
Gibbs made a series of sculptures with corresponding NFTs which will land on the moon. While many artworks have been sent into space, this is the first time artworks have ever been approved to land on the surface of the moon. The intention is that the sculptures remain there on the moon in perpetuity. The project is titled Moon Phases. Well, we'll see. When people start going to the moon and littering and leaving their trash behind, we'll, we'll see how long the sculptures stay on the moon. I wanted to create a historically meaningful NFT project rooted in humanistic and philosophical thought. Our achievements in space represent the limitless potential of humanity. Space explorations have given us a perspective of our ability to transcend worldly constraints. These ideas are central to my NFT project, which can be understood as a continuation and celebration of humanity's aspirational accomplishments within and beyond our own planets. And they're landing on the moon in July. The moon phases sculpture will land in the Oceanus Procellarum after being launched from pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center in a fully automated mission orchestrated by the private aerospace company Intuitive Machines. The project was first initiated when team members from Intuitive Machines approached Kunz's team about the possibility of getting his work on the moon back in November. We got excited really fast. The rocket is already on the pad. In fact, it was actually supposed to launch in March. I don't know why it didn't launch. Nobody knows what the sculptures are or how they're going to work. Or how they're going to be sold. I don't know, but it's very interesting. I fully support going to the moon and leaving behind artwork. And here's a sad story that is uh, everywhere now about Bruce Willis. He's diagnosed with aphasia dementia, young man, stepping away from acting. So the fact that we're hearing about this now means it has been going on chronically for a long time with lots of tests and lots of suffering. And it's absolutely unfortunate. No matter how you feel about the guy or his acting or his family. or He's diagnosed with aphasia. I want to live it up together. Aphasia is a condition that robs you of the ability to communicate. It can affect your ability to speak, write, and understand language, both verbal and written. Aphasia typically occurs suddenly after a stroke or a head injury but it can also come on gradually from slow-growing brain tumors or a disease that causes progressive, permanent damage, degenerative. The severity of aphasia depends on a number of conditions, including the cause and the extent of brain damage. So the fact they're telling this to us now means that it's pretty definite. There's probably not a lot of hope to regain the non-aphasic personality that Bruce had. And it's going to be a long downward trend probably for him. And it's unfortunate. Once the cause has been addressed, the main treatment for aphasia is speech language therapy. The person with aphasia relearns and practices language skills and learns other ways to communicate. Family members often participate in the process, helping the person communicate. And the reason this is so alarming and distressing to me is because of a personal experience that I've had with aphasia. In my family, my wife's mother had a form of aphasia. 
linguistic blindfolding, plural, pure alexia, without a graphia. So this is sort of a similar thing, and it, it, this is an article I wrote for both blogs. I'll put the uh, link in chat if you want to take a look at it. And uh, Janet's mother had a stroke. And it was the most fascinating thing that happened to her. This <laughs> pure Alexia without a graphia. And what that means is that Jana's mother it's so complicated could not read text but she could write text so let's say she could write a letter to Jana and then when she's done writing the letter she would not be able to read what she had just written totally bizarre she could not read a newspaper she could not read her mail read a bill but if someone read her mail to her, or if she watched and listened to the radio or a television program, the news, she could comprehend that and understand it. But if it was written down, she could not read it. So I guess it's sort of a form of aphasia. But it has a different term. Pure Alexi without a graph. And it's sort of heartbreaking where, you know, you, you have a mother writing a daughter, communicating with her in mail because the daughter is deaf, the mother is hearing, but signs very well. And you exchange letters, that's back and forth. Especially in the days where you had to have a TTY, and now we have video phones and FaceTime, but, you know, all that's too late. So at the time, it was writing letters back and forth. So the mother would write a letter and not know what it said. And she'd send it off. And then Jana would write back and someone in the family would read the letter to the mother. So it was hard to have an intimate letter because you knew other people were reading it. But what the most concerning thing is, is people with pure alexia without agraphia is how do they get protected? If they're selling their home, they're signing a contract. How can they when they can't read it? And you have people around you who maybe want to take advantage of you and who tell you what's in there or what it is and it isn't that at all. But how would you know? You can't read. So you become very reliant on other people. And not all people are trustworthy and careful. Other people can tend to be unhelpful and dastardly. And in some ways, uh, you become illiterate. And you really don't have the ability or the capacity to relearn a to read a language. It's very difficult. So while you're completely alive and aware in your mind, and you can hear, listen, you just can't read. And the world, the legal world, runs on paper and contracts with the assumption that you can, you know, read basic English, let alone legalese. We're going to take a very brief blood pressure break, come back and talk about why Will Smith refused to leave when the Academy people said, get out. Back in a moment.
And we are back on Bowles TV, B O L E S dot TV. I'm David Bowles with you Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern. And we are also live in our chat channel on Discord. Hey, it's a brand new feature. You can go to the David Bowles server and then join the live Bowles TV stream chat. And you can chat with me while we are in the middle of this broadcast. Well, we've had a big day so far talking about the metaverse and NFTs and all kinds of interesting things. And we return to our famous beating a dead dog, beating a dead horse, swatting a flying fly. Will Smith, who bitch slapped Chris Rock. And this is some interesting news that Will Smith refused to leave the Oscars after slapping Chris Rock. The Academy says. The Academy Awards people say. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences announced Wednesday that Will Smith was asked to leave the Oscar ceremony after he slapped Chris Rock. But he refused to go. Now, isn't that interesting? Things unfolded in a way we could not have anticipated, the Academy said in a statement. We also recognize we could have handled the situation differently. The revelation came after the Academy Boards of Governor met to initiate disciplinary proceedings against Mr. Smith for violations of the Academy's standards of conduct including inappropriate physical contact, abusive or threatening behavior, and compromising the integrity of the Academy. The Academy said it's providing Smith with at least 15 days' notice of a vote regarding his violations and sanctions and the opportunity to be heard beforehand by means of a written response. The board will meet again on April 18, at which point it will take any disciplinary action, which may include suspension, expulsion, or other sanctions. It also called Smith actions deeply shocking, a traumatic event to witness in person and on television. Mr. Rock, We apologize to you for what you experienced on our stage and thank you for your resilience in the moment. We also apologize to our nominees, guests, and viewers for what transpired from what should have been a celebratory event. Well, that'll be interesting to see if they actually follow up. The sense that I'm getting from the street is nothing's going to happen. They're going to be too terrified to touch Will Smith in any meaningful way. They might, you know, say something, slap him with something, put him on probation. I don't know what they do. Will they take back his Academy Award? I don't think so. Should he give it back as a way to rehabilitate his career and luster? Yes, he should. Will he? Never. And that's the difference between a man and a man who believes that he is a man. This popped up right before we went on the air today. With the Google, you can check facts with these very special Google features. What does that mean? Well, it can be a little hard to know what is true and what people are trying to pass off as true when you do a search. So this is what Google's doing. UFO filmed... So it's something about UFO. It looks like the results are, and then it follows. So here's the explanation. A, an example of new information of literary, literacy tips on notices for wrapping, rapidly evolving situations. So you can get information quickly on a topic that you are trying to get more information about. There will be a new label for highly cited sources. Let's say a local news organization breaks an investigative story looking into problems at your local school district. 
The story is so big that it gets picked up by numerous other media outlets. But what if you don't see that original story, which had unique context for local residents? We're introducing a way to help you identify stories that have been frequently cited by other news organizations, giving you a simple way to find the most helpful or relevant information for a news story. And this new label will appear on top stories. You'll be able to find it on anything from an investigative article to an interview, an announcement. As long as other publishers indicate its relevance by linking to it. All about search returns, all about advertising. You can get fact checks from independent fact checking organizations. So that's good. This is all new. Trying to deal with fake news. Trying to put a better look on it than what we have now. And all the fraud that's going on and all the lying that's happening right before our eyes. You can learn more about any page online. We've all had this happen before. You're looking online and come across a story from a website you haven't heard of before. In these situations, it's helpful to check the source. For example, if you're looking for information about popular new investment options, you might want to make sure you follow the advice from a source with expertise on finance. Now, it's easy to check the source right on search with the About This result. The supporting fact checkers on a global stage, which is very good. And it's all about finding your way in a very confusing and tempting world. So I say, cheers to you, Google, for helping us find an easy way out of a rough world. Now it's that time of day again, where we put our personal reputation and our ego on the line as we train our chess mind in chessable. Now, unlike the chess.com daily puzzle, these chessable lessons are painful and timed. So that means I have, I think it's like 30 seconds to look at the board, make a coaching decision, chat with you about it, and then be thoroughly defeated by picking the wrong. Sounds like fun. And here we go. So we are white to play. And we have to, <laughs> excuse me, find a way to try to checkmate the opposing king. And they really love queen sacrifices for some reason. So here's my queen. We could go here, right? And then here, disaster. I don't like that. We could go here and here, which I am liking, but it doesn't put my queen in danger yet, but I do like it. So I think I'm running out of time. So that is the move I'm going to have to make. I'll try. That was the right move, according to Jezebel. Now, what do I do? Well, I can't go here because this pawn will take. I could go here, but then the king will take because I have no protection. So probably they want me to go here, which gives me some safety and puts the king in the check. And then the king will probably move here. And then I would then move there and the king wouldn't be able to take me because I have the pawn here. So that, I believe, It's one answer to a difficult problem. I'll try it and see what happens. It was the right move. And the king moved where I anticipated the king would move. Which makes me think that now I go here and here. King's in check. This pawn protects the queen, so the king can't take. 
King can't go there. I got him here. King can't go there. Got him there. I believe I win the puzzle. But sometimes we have to make sure because you never know. Yes, I believe that is the strategy. It is going to work. I'm a long way in the four months, five months since I've been streaming. Not really. I feel like I should be better, but I'm not that better. So, I will move. Well, that's interesting. So there's one more move. Okay, so the king moved out of my way. Hmm. So now I just move here and that. I don't want to move here and move here. King's in check. Okay, King can't go there because I'm here. Can't go there because I'm here. And can't go there because I'm here. Okay, now we win. Done. Four new moves. Accuracy 100 million percent. I accept. <laughs> Here we go with another four move puzzle. And today we're black. Black to play. Okay, so here is our opposing king. And here are our important pieces. This is a four move Aroni, so it's not going to be very easy. They really like a queen sacrifice, but if that takes, king takes, I'm really, that really doesn't do any good. But I can't see another move that the puzzle will like, so I better make it. I'll just make it. Oh, it was the right move. See, they love a king-queen sacrifice. I don't like a queen sacrifice. I like to keep my queen. But I know that's immature and ridiculous. So, say, all right, so now, okay, now I move the pawn up. Puts the king in check, protected by El Bishop Yo. That's got to be the next move. And then the king will move, and I will have to reattack and find my new way. I believe this is the right decision, but who knows? Some days are diamonds, some days are gold, as the old song goes. I will try. That was the right move. Now, I wish I could get my rooks in here somehow because this is a bank rank. <sighs> but he has also, white also has two rooks. So this has got to be a different sort of play. White to play. Hmm. That doesn't help anything. That doesn't help anything. That doesn't help anything. Nothing helps anything. Oh, this is getting scary now because I don't know what to do. I'm running out of time. I gotta do something. I'll just move. I didn't move something. No. Oh, the king move. Wow. There's no way to prevent the rook from moving to h8. That's why you want to move it. Ah, so the king moves up so the rook can move over and get into the game. Thank you. I don't know what to do now. Okay. Now, this has got to be a rook move here. Put the king and jack there. We 
which is interesting because that almost feels like the end of the game. Because the king doesn't have anywhere to go. He can't go here, and he can't go there. I think I like it, and I don't know why. I'm not sure why they made that night move. What's he trying to do? Go here? No. Go here? No. Go there? I don't understand it. I better hurry or I'm going to lose my turn. That is that. 75%. I missed one. I missed the king moving up. That was a good, that was a good, that was a good, that was a good, that was a good puzzle. Because I missed it. Black to play. There's the king. Here's my queen. Ooh, and I have two knights, so this is gonna get tricky. Because these puzzle love the puzzles love the knight. I really like this move. And then the knight protects. Hits both of those. I really like that, but I don't think it's going to be active enough. They won't like it. No. Nope. That, they want me to sacrifice my queen again. See, I'm not even listening to my own advice. Queen up. Take the queen. Now what am I going to do? Makes me feel like, oh, this rook's got to take this rook. That's what I think. This Yeah. That has to and then the king is in check. Okay, so that's what I have to do. This rook takes that rook. Yeah. And then the king moves. And then and then also really like just because I'm inexperienced I like this knight taking that bishop but I know that's not the move because it's not dangerous enough so I'll do this one okay that was the right move mm -hmm. okay <coughs> now I can't go here because the knight will take and I can't go here because the bishop will take so it's not a rook move. The rook is in a good place, so it's got to be a knight move. Working on the knight moves, as Bob Seger might say. I think it's going to be knight here, which is a fork. Well, puts the king in check, threatens the bishop, but then this bishop would just take. have to do it. Mm. Not the right move. Oh, they want me to take the bishop. Oh, I'm so stupid. Okay, take the bishop and the king's in check, and that's the end of a study. Oh, I got 50% right. Not so good. Not so good. This is a three move. Black to play. Here's the king. Here's my queen. Here are my shotgun rooks. So this is going to be a fun one. I hope. So I can't go there because that'll take that. If I go here, 
Bishop will take. And then I could go again. I think that's going to have to be. They, they like putting the king in check. I'll try this one. Nope. Don't want it. They want me to sacrifice my queen. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh, that's very bad. Now they got a queen. Hmm. okay because I have it protected I think so I think I better get going because my time is running out so I think I gotta go here kings in check bishop takes queen takes I win okay I got it now to do that. What happened? Oh, my king was in check. Well, I wish they would have notified me. I'm trying to win the puzzle. I'm not trying to get out of... Out, I'm not trying to get out of check. So now they make me make the right move. And now my, I lose my queen. And now I go here. it all up. Just a terrible mess. Oh, I got zero right on that one. Well, that's where we say thank you so much for playing. Now we're going to go do a daily puzzle because this didn't go very well. My, oh my, oh my. Whew. Painful. Okay, so they want us to pick another puzzle. Okay, we'll go to the 17th. Magnetic Attraction. Sounds remarkably deceptive. And what's good about this one is we can figure this out together. We don't have to. Lose our hearts and minds over this because we're trying to beat a time limit. Magnetic attraction, white to play. Okay. I have to do better because on the chessful I started so well and ended so poorly. That was a hard, that last one was a hard one. With the king moving and the sacrifice of the queen and the threatening queening. Oh boy. So I need to do better. My initial reaction is this to hear there. I mean, not to there, but putting the king in check. But then he'll just move. But what other moves do I have? Which is what they do in a puzzle. I'll try it. Not the right move. This. Put the king in check that way. Nope. Well, 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 Davy. Well, well, well. Not having a good day. Hint, it's a queen move. Oh my gosh, and I hit the button twice. That's what I don't like on these hints. Now it told me. Now it ruined it. I like to figure it out myself. Okay, so I move it there. <laughs> and I lose my queen. Painful. So I have to get the king in check so I can go this way and this way and put the king in check, but the queen will take. I can just get out of the way and go here, and the queen won't take because my pawn would protect me.
wonder if he fancy and go here. No. So it must be here. No. What's the move? It's a night move. Working on the night moves. And it's not the right move. I. So it, it can't be here. And put the king in check because this this is what that'll take. But maybe it is that. I'll try that. What's the move? Ah. And then this baby goes down here. I solved the puzzle. It was not a good solve. It was a very painful solve. But I did figure it out. Only with one hint. Three wrong moves and one hint. Huh? Okay, this one is with a little help from my friends. I never understand these titles. They're very misleading. I shouldn't even look at them. White the move. So it must be some kind of discovered check or someone's protecting somebody. But this is an end game. I, I tend to do better on end games, believe it or not. Openings are okay. Middle games are where the games is lost for most people, including me. And then the end game, you know, you can practice it and it's only going to go a few ways and you got to figure it out. It's, it's a very fun puzzle. And now I have just placed myself in the position of trying to figure out how to make this work. So, if I can't put the king immediately in check, which I cannot, I have to move this rook. Because this is going to go bang. And the temptation for me is just to move it all the way over here. Somehow. There's also this move. But if I make that move now, which I sort of like, but if I make it now, I will lose my rook. So I have to move my rook. So I'm just going to move it over here. Nope. Try again. Protect the king? No. Try again. Hint. It is a rook move. Okay, so I'm right about what I'm trying to do. I just don't know how to do it. But it can't be take, because that that is not a take. Here, maybe. I'm going to try to go protect the, the knight. Now, it can't be take... It can't be take the rook. Oh, my God. It's take the rook. Why? Uh, that I don't understand. Because now this... So I had to figure out how to beat this in fewer than three moves. I'm gonna go there. What does that get me? Nothing, really. I could go here, which I actually sort of like. But what does that get me?
So my knight has to eventually land up there. Because that puts the king in check, at least right now. So I could go here. And the king can't move, which I like because he can't move to that as well. Well, maybe that's not. Yeah, he can't move to that square. And the king can't move here because my king is here. So that is the move. And then eventually the knight is going to have to land on. skills. Mm -hmm. Nobody said we were perfect, but we are trying. Not trying to be perfect, we're trying to just get through the puzzle. We're trying to end on a high note, because we've had very many low notes so far in our chess career. And I have two more. One, two, I have two more chances to make this work. So if I go here, the king's in check. But then the king can just move. Because the, this king is not in check. Goes there, but that does nothing. To, it's got to be. It's got to be a check. It's got to be this. No, nope, not that. This. Oh my god! Now what do I do? One more move and it's the disaster. So maybe it's something like, like this. I go here. Queens. I then go here. there because the king is there and the king can't move here because the king is here and it doesn't matter if the queen goes down here to check my my king because it's gonna run out of time right one here to here one one two check and the queen runs out of time that's the right move I will do yeah now 
of a queen. Terrifying, right? Terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. But not really. We need a little help from your friends. Wow. That was a puzzle that made you think. And sometimes I'm not thinking so good. But today I did. Well, I thank you so much for being here. We've had a wonderful, exciting, delightful show. It's been deep and concise and wild and wacky and just a lot of fun. If you have any questions for me, please find me in email, david at bowls tv. B-O-L-E-S dot TV. David at bowls dot TV. You can find me on Twitter and superfollow at David Bowles. On Facebook, we're regular old Bowles. On Instagram, we are Bowles Books. And on TikTok, we are Bowles TV without a period. And you can join our Discord server if you're interested in hanging out there, maybe joining in our live chat, or just hanging out and saying something fun and funny. We're there for you. So until tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern, I'm David Bowles. I wish you a wonderful night, a good morning, a terrific nap, and may your soul encompass you as it encompasses the universe. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow.